Introduction of Hive. Hive is a data warehouse infrastructure that is built on top of Hadoop. Hive provides a mechanism to project structure on the data using SQL-like language called HiveQL. Hive uses MapReduce and HDFS for processing and storage retrieval of data. Now that we understand, the data is an HDFS, processing is made by MapReduce. Now there is a, a small uh, uh, point here. It's not exactly uh, MapReduce, right? But for the time being, let's let's keep it as MapReduce. The advantages of using Hive, it can be used as an ETL tool in the sense you can bring data to a Hive table, modify the data, store it as permanently. It provides capability of querying and analysis. So Hive is actually used by the uh, analyst community who is very good at SQL can handle large data sets and you can do filters, join, group by uh, all the SQL queries on top of map and reduce. Now, if you ask me, can I see the map reduce code created by Hive? No, you cannot see. Hmm? So the map reduce code created by Hive uh, is not visible. You will just get a jar file. You won't even see the jar file. You will see the jar file running, right? Now, the most important point you have to remember is that Hive is expected to be slow. It is slow because ultimately it is MapReduce. It's not like your uh, uh, Oracle or uh, MySQL or something because uh, in, in any RDBMS systems, typically when you write a query, you will expect the results within second, within microsecond. In high, when you write a query, sometimes I have seen queries taking four hours, five hours. Why? Because, you know, it's just an illusion. Where not to use Hive. So this is a very important point. Where you should not be using Hive. Hive should not be used if the data does not cross gigabytes. That means if you are not having big data, why are, why are you using Hive, right? You can stick with your traditional tools. If we don't find schema or bringing in schema is difficult or not possible. Now the point is that when you access Hive, you have to create a table. Hive works on the concept of databases and tables, right? And whenever you're defining a table, the table should have a schema. Now if your data cannot fit into the table, there is no point in loading the data. Let's say you're getting some type of data. Let's say you're getting text data, raw text data, right? Now, in that data, you're not able to find a structure to the data. Imagine, I'm just saying you imagine. Imagine you're getting raw data, plain freeform text, right? So in freeform text data, how do you find a structure? You cannot find a structure. That means you cannot use Hive on top of that data. So you have to use Hive where you can find some structure to the data. Maybe you have comma separated values, space separated values, column separated values, something or JSON files, XML files, even semi-structured data. They can all fit into Hive. Now the next case is if we need response in seconds and low latency applications. I told you Hive is expected to be slow. Mm -hmm. And if you are looking for a faster solution, don't use Hive. In, uh, if RDBMS can solve, don't invest time in Hive. Very important point. Hive is not a replacement for RDBMS or something, okay? Because RDBMS systems are real-time systems and Hive is not something which can replace them. If your RDBMS can solve your most of your problems, then don't use Hive. Hive is specifically for huge amount of structured data. <clears throat> Say you want to create a table, size of the table is three terabytes. Very good, do it in Hive, query the table. Your SQL will be very easy, even though it takes some time, you will get the result. That is where your Hive's use case will come. So think about Hive like a translator, it's a translator. You write SQL, it speaks MapReduce to Hadoop, right? And Hadoop gives the result, it shows as a table to you. So for you, the developer, everything is equal and table. For Hadoop, everything is MapReduce and Hive stands in the middle. Now, what is the similarity with SQL uh, and uh, difference from SQL? 
uh, Hive is very similar to SQL-like queries. It is based, based on actually SQL 922 uh, framework. And it is safe to say that its functions are mostly same. What is the difference from SQL? The major difference is that Hive query executes on Hadoop rather than traditional database. That means you cannot install Hive outside Hadoop. It works only on HDFS. This allows Hive to scale to handle huge data sets, which cannot be done by RDBMS. The internal execution of a Hive query is via a series of automatically generated MapReduce jobs, right? So the next question naturally you will have is that, do I understand Hive, but can I fine tune Hive? What about performance? Can I improve the performance? Can I do something with Hive? Yes, you can do. Now all Hive queries will be converted to MapReduce job. So why can't we write MapReduce ourselves? So this is one question people ask. See, Hive is converting everything into MapReduce. So why don't you just write MapReduce for God's sake, right? Why are you using Hive? Understanding the internals of Hadoop framework is must to write MapReduce. SQL engineers can quickly write Hive scripts. Now, if you want to write MapReduce, right? You have to learn Java or Python or Ruby or C Sharp, right? Then you have to implement your logic or using MapReduce framework. You have to write your custom mapper, custom reducer, package it as a jar file, re resolve all the complexities, errors. Now here, you don't have to do any debugging, anything. Create a table, write your query, and it just works. That is how it works. So the next point is that, now talking about the real world. Okay, so let's suppose you learn Hive in, in, in our IntelliPath course and you master Hive. And what did I teach you? I taught you that Hive is a SQL interface to Hadoop. Fine, you understand that, right? And then you go to a real world project, okay? And then you go to the project and say that, you know what, I'm an expert in Hive. Hmm? An expert in Hive. I know Hive really well. You are gonna say to your project. And these guys are gonna tell you that, you know what, you can use Hive or you can use Hive plus this. You can use Impala. You can use Spark SQL. You can use Phoenix. What did I just do? I just blew your mind out of proportion. So when you go to a real project, in a real world project, and you ask them, okay, I have data on Hadoop, give me a SQL tool, they will either give you Hive or give you Hive plus this or give you Impala or give you Spark SQL or give you Phoenix. And you are like, oh my God, there is only Hive that is a SQL interface. Now I am in a dilemma because these guys are talking about this, Impala, Spark SQL, Phoenix. And trust me, if you write a SQL query, it will be executed the same way in all these platforms. You write a group by query, Hive will execute it, Hive plus Thais will execute it, Impala will execute it, Spark SQL will execute it, Phoenix will also execute it. So the real question is, what are these different tools? Right, so this is some real world info to you, please, right? See, Hive is the original tool. This came first, right? So Hive is the first Avenger. So this is the first Avenger. So this is the first guy who came into the world, right? So when Hive came, everybody was happy. So people said, all right, fantastic. Now I got SQL interface. I can write a query and you know what? The query executes nice. But over a period of time, over a period of time, people didn't really like Hive. People said like, all right, Hive is great, but the problem is that the queries are damn slow. You know, the other day I wrote a query, it took a day to give me the result. I don't really like Hive. We need something else. That is when, that is when the company called Hortonworks started proposing Hive and Thais. Now what happens here is that if you access a Hortonworks Hadoop cluster, 
Hmm? And you write a Hive query, say execute, the Hive query will be converted into Thes, not MapReduce. So original Hive is Hive plus MapReduce. Hortonworks Hive is Hive plus Thes. So what is Thes? Thes is a framework. Uh, Apache framework probably if you're interested you dig deeper well this is created uh, to uh, make map reduce faster so I don't want to get into details of this I'm just giving you some extra information for the time being understand that this is a framework which is built uh, to overcome the problems in map reduce map reduces ideally slow map reduces normally slow Right, so some guys built something called Thes, and Thes also uses mappers and reduces and all, but Thes is much much faster than uh, your map reduce, right? So Thes is a Hindi word. It's it stands for speed, and it is created by Indians. It is uh, the next level of map reduce you can say. So what Hortonworks did, they said, see what Hortonworks did. They said. Why don't we club Hive and Thay so that queries are faster? Are you getting the point? So if you are on a Hortonworks cluster, you write a Hive query, say execute, you will see a Thay's job firing. You will never see a map reduce job firing because Hortonworks promotes Thay's. Even though Thay's is Apache open source, Hortonworks says they promote Thay's and they say that's their, their, their queries are faster. So your first Avenger original Hive is damn slow. Hmm? Now high plus this, this guy is interactive. Interactive query means it is faster but not real time. So if you are writing a Hive query on a Hortonworks cluster, it uses Thes as an execution engine and it is faster. But it's not real time or something, it's kind of like faster. So when Hortonworks started this, even before that, there is another company called Cloudera. Hmm, there is a company called Cloudera. Cloudera, what they did, they invented something called Impala. Impala is again built on top of Hive. Impala is a SQL interface, but what happens if you write a SQL query on top of Impala, it will run it using a daemon called Impala D. It doesn't use MapReduce, it doesn't use Thes, it uses a proprietary Impala D to run. So this is promoted by Cloudera and this is also interactive. Now Hortonworks will say that Hive plus this is faster. Cloudera will say Impala is faster. That is a war going on for like past four years. Nobody knows. Both are same. But whether it is Hive plus this or Impala, it's again a SQL interface for you. Only difference if you're on a Hortonworks cluster, the execution is done by this. <clears throat> if you're on a Cloudera cluster, Execution is done by a demon called Impala and there is somebody called Spark. Spark has a SQL interface that's called Spark SQL. If you write a query on Spark SQL, again same SQL, this will be com converted into Spark and this is almost real time. So this is faster. Look at this, look at this. Hive Thes, Hive Thes, SQL, Hive, this, this, but in Hortonworks, you can also say that I don't want this, I want MapReduce. They can switch the engine. So these are all additional information, extra information, but good to know things, right? So Phoenix is SQL interface on top of NoSQL. That means HBase is your NoSQL database right and HBase doesn't understand SQL so if you do not know the language of HBase you install Phoenix you write your SQL query it's going to convert in the language of HBase show you the result original Hive plus MapReduce is batch processing very very slow Thes and Impala are similar interactive but Thes is Hortonworks Impala is Cloudera that means you will never see Thes on Cloudera and Impala on Hortonworks Pass Spark SQL is again on Spark framework Phoenix is on HBase Thank you.